Hello everybody. I wanted to do a quick tutorial on getting started with Lightburn. Uh, so if you've just downloaded Lightburn, you're going to want to set up for your laser, uh, and you got to tell all the tell the software all the parameters you're using. So we're going to click on devices here, and these are my existing ones. But you'll click on new device, and you first need to uh, click on what controller you're using. If you know which one you're using, go ahead and click it. If you're not 100% sure, uh, the very common is this Gerbil controller. So we will click on that. Quick note, if you have a laser cutter with a Ruwita controller, you will have to pay for the slightly more expensive Lightburn software uh, and then click Ruwita. Right now we're going to go with Gerbil, click Next. Uh, sometimes there's USB and Ethernet. In this case, this controller only does USB uh, connection, so we will click Next and we can rename our machine to whatever we want. I'm going to base this off of a CAM5 machine, but since I already have one, I'm going to name it CAM52. And we need to know our x-axis, which is this direction, and our y-axis, which is this direction. So we have 600 by 400. Uh, if you are not 100% sure, you can either look up your bed size or measure it out. Uh, if you are make it too big, it might slam into the side. If you make it a little too small, it's not going to hurt anything. So we're going to click next. And this is very important to know where your machine homes. I know that this machine homes up in the top right corner. If you happen to have more than one machine and save a profile, save, save a file that you've set up all the layers and whatnot, uh, and save it on one machine and move it to another machine or open it into another machine's profile, which you can change here. If the homing position is different, it will move, it will flip-flop your text around. Uh, so usually a quick solution to that is clicking these buttons up here to flip the text elements back around. It'll, it'll help you. Uh, hopefully one day they'll, they'll be, get around to fixing that problem. But not too many people own a ton of different lasers. Leave auto home on unless you have any specific reasons you need to leave it off. Uh, and we will click next. So if any of this information is wrong, once we've finished, you can simply click on that device and click edit again. We'll just run you through the whole process again and you can change whatever you need to. Okay, so it goes to my default machine here, but we are going to click on CAM52. Usually it'll figure out what COM port you're using, but uh, since we're not actually connected to the machine, we won't do anything there. So we can see that it has changed the bed size to uh, the appropriate dimensions that we told it to. And we're going to import our first file. Uh, I'm doing a DXF file, but this works with a lot of you know SVGs and whatnot as well. So we're going to click Import and open this stencil that I made a while back. Uh, all right, there we go. So we can see that there's a problem right off the bat. Uh, it's much too large, uh, and the reason for this is that uh, the the uh, units are set to the wrong setting. So I'm going to just delete this really quick and I'm going to show you the simple solution to fix that. Go to Edit, Settings, and right here is DXF Import Settings. <clears throat> so right here it says it's imported as inches, but I know for a fact that I de uh, designed it in millimeters. So this will uh, change the size to be more appropriate. If you happen to open up a file that you didn't design and it is teeny tiny, it's because they designed it in inches and you have it in millimeters or whatever you, you designed it in. All right, so we're going to click OK and we're going to import that one more time. So while it's loading here, uh, it's going to import uh, all DXF files as one grouped item. So I can click anywhere here and it will select all of the elements. If I want to change just this internal Part. I'm going to have to break this all apart. So we're going to click this ungroup button and now I can just select the items on the inside. Uh, I'm going to turn these to a blue layer. To change the layer you can simply just select the item and click any of these colors that you want. And we have a blue internal there. You can also select everything and group it again. And whenever you select any of it, you select all of those items and we can move them around without uh, changing their positions. Alright, 
Uh, next, we'll be changing your power settings up here. I'm not going to get into this too far, but just by double clicking allows you to see all of the different settings available. So I'll go over uh, some of these settings in the next video.